Rally towers are like Miss America. They look great, but do they do anything? My bike is more scuba diver than supermodel, so what on earth would I want with a rally tower? The 690 cockpit is pretty cramped. Even with just the GPS, phone, and heat on there, there's not a lot of space for anything else on the handlebars, and once all those things are on there, I can't see my controls. Which might not be a bad thing, because then technically I'm never actually exceeding the speed limit, right? I added a windscreen to help with wind protection, but the downside to that is when I'm riding off-road, it sometimes rises up and smacks me in the helmet, and the stock headlight was pretty dim. We upgraded to a Cyclops LED bulb, which has helped, but I still sometimes struggle to see at night. So as you can see, the rally fairing is going to bring the windscreen out quite a bit further, so it won't have any risk of hitting my helmet while I ride. It's got space here for two headlights, a low beam and a high beam, both of which are going to be brighter than the headlight that I have now. And you can see all the space here will be stacked up with all the different farkles that I have on my handlebars. So I'll have my GPS, my phone, and all of my controls visible so I can see them while I'm riding. With the stock headlight, it's a really broad beam pattern, but it only gives you about 150 feet of usable light. With the Cyclops, it's a 20 degree beam pattern, but gives me almost 700 feet of usable light. For somebody like me with night blindness, that's gonna greatly increase my confidence while riding at night. We are gonna take you step by step as we install the Nomad ADV Rally Tower with Cyclops lights on my 2019 KTM 690 Enduro R. We're gonna start by reading all of the instructions so that we know exactly what we're doing and that we have all the tools and parts that we need. So let's get started. We're gonna get started with step one. We're gonna take the headlight shroud off, the seat, the radiator covers, and we'll bring you back when that's all finished. All right, step one continues. We've got the headlight shroud off, and now we need to cut all the zip ties. We're gonna pull out all the indicator lights and label everything so we know exactly where it goes when I put it into the tower. You just pull. I didn't break it. <laughs> I'm gonna label it. It's neutral. <laughs> We've made significant progress. These three are where they're supposed to be. This and this are our current disasters. So this one, we have to decide if we're cutting the plastic or loosening the banjo bolt. You can either disconnect the brake lines and bleed the brakes later or cut the plastic headlight housing to extract it from the bike. To save time, we decided to cut the plastic housing in order to extract the brake lines from it. All right, we've officially removed everything from the dash housing. You can see there's no indicator lights, there's no USB port, and because this is empty, I now get a treat. <laughs> that was a long job. That was step one. There's only 12 steps to go. <laughs> See you in September. <laughs> We made it through step one and now I'm on to step two. I'm gonna take out the ignition switch and mount the brackets that hold the tower. That should be all of step two. So we'll bring it back when I have an update. They've re-engineered the frame mount. It used to be two separate pieces as far as we can tell from the picture and now it's one solid piece. This frame mount here, needs to attach back here to the ignition mount. So you can see there's, I was wrong, we didn't need to take the ignition switch off. We put the ignition switch here with a spacer and the mount, and now I'm attempting, can you even see that in there? <laughs> to try and twist that bolt in by hand, and then I'll tighten it down with the tool. Well, fingers and bolts don't work, so removed the gas tank. Now there's plenty of space to tighten down these bolts. Step two, we got the bracket mounted. <laughs> We're ready for the Nomad Tower. It was pretty tricky. The U-bolt on the bottom and the bolts on the top all had to line up 
and there's very little space right around the ignition lock. So it was pretty tricky getting everything mounted, but Nathan stepped in and helped a couple of times and, and now it's done. So I get chocolate. <laughs> That's the important part. All right, next we get to build the tower. That's step three. So I've got the two side panels and two sizes of these cross members. I'm gonna put it all together. And step three is just building the tower. And then step four, I'll be mounting it to the bike. So we'll bring you back hopefully very quickly for step four. <laughs> So once the tower is all built, then we get to Loctite, each bolt and put it back together. I'm almost done though. Step three, is that what we're on? Is going much faster than the other steps, even with much goofing. <laughs> oh, I should tell you about this. Look at this. This is super cool. So I was not sure which bolts went where, and I had read all the instructions, but I forgot that it said to flip back through to the bolt chart. And so this told me that these are the M20s and these are the M16s, so I knew which bolt to use with which fastener. It was great. We finished step three, we have this beautiful tower. No mad ADP, <laughs> I'm very excited. <laughs> and now we're gonna start step four, which is mounting this tower to the frame trying to get this wiring harness in through the cross members. Not break anything, <laughs> it's the goal. Don't want to pinch it. Trying to fit M8 bolts through the tower and the mount. I got it through most of the way, but it is not totally lined up on the far side. A little gentle persuasion how to do it. Percussive maintenance. It's even better than gentle persuasion. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Step four complete. We mounted the tower to the bike. That was probably the least painful step yet, except for the, the blood, but that's okay. <laughs> step five is going to be putting on the headlights. Some of the fun things you might want to know about the headlights is actually they are the same. So I just put the cover on the one that's the low beam and the other one will be the high beam. Mounting the headlights to the tower. Loosely mounted. I'm gonna get the other one on there because I have a feeling I should have done that one first. <laughs> Think, no. Act, reflect, act. That's me. <laughs> you can ask me what I'm doing again. <laughs> I am remounting that light so I can do the one on the top first because <laughs> there is no room for my fingers with the mounted on the bottom first. What did the instructions say? Uh, I don't remember. You do. Um, they said to mount the lights. As shown in the picture. <laughs> As shown in the picture. Oh, I forgot to look in the picture. <laughs> Ta-da! Headlights! A little bit fiddly, but not too hard of a step. And now, we get to go through and put the switches from the old dash panel onto the new dash panel. Okay. The Z light and the up and down light. <laughs> I'm just pushing these indicator lights into. Do it mean, might mean benefit. Well, danger mode. <laughs> from gentle persuasion. <laughs> Ah, see? Gentle persuasion worked. <laughs> dun, dun, dun! Step six is done. The dashboard is ready. And now we get to do headlight wiring. We've got the splitter that came with the kit. All I needed to know is that blue goes with high beam. So I'm gonna plug that into the top light. Green goes with low beam. I'm gonna plug that one in to the bottom light. And then once we get all of the wiring reconnected, we'll test it out. So we'll bring you back soon.
Uh, step one took a long time because I was labeling both sides of the plugs as I unplugged them. I'm super grateful now because now all I have to do is find one side of the plug, sometimes I label it with colors, match it to the other side of the plug, and put it together. So it's way easier than it would be. I would have no idea where to plug most of these things in. So next time you're thinking about doing a project, learn from this one. <laughs> Nomad ADV actually put it in their instructions to label everything, and I'm so glad I did. Well, step eight of getting all the electronics more or less connected, I think is done. The next thing we're gonna focus on is actually making sure that's zip tied, the dash gets mounted, and the back of the bike gets buttoned up, and then we get to mount the screen. So we'll bring you back when we get closer to that. We are bringing you back for the screen, which was kind of a challenge. These holes here are behind plastic. We actually decided to take this bar off of the tower. We're not sure if you're supposed to do it that way, but it seemed a little bit like, pick your poison, it's all gonna be tricky because it all needs to just magically go together. If only we were Harry Potter. We also mounted the GPS mount because we decided we could not get the nut for the GPS mounting bracket be behind the dash so or at least get a tool back there to hold it tight then we came down here and we mounted the windscreen the windscreen to the side plate which is going to mount to the stock side panel here we trimmed it a little bit and put this mounting bracket on attached it and it seems like it's all fitting together it's been pretty tricky <laughs> there's a lot of uh putting things on and taking things off and putting things on and then taking things off again <laughs> as I figure out which bolt is supposed to go where and which nuts are supposed to go where and which washers are supposed to go where so uh yeah there's a, and then there's a lot of does it fit like this and looking at pictures on the internet and trying to make sense of how that relates to the directions so it's a lot of learning happening here <laughs> but that's good <laughs> All right, we're mounting up some of the last things and I noticed, look at that, we're almost to the end of our bolts. That's gotta mean we're almost done with the project, right? We are making some good progress. Everything is bolted together and now we just have to go through and tighten all of the most recent bolts that we did. But you can see on the bike, we've gotten pretty much all the side panels back on and we're just ready to tighten things down, add some blinkers and call it a day. Oh, just gotta hit it with your purse, got it. worked. And there you have it. We've got the Nomad ADV tower and the Cyclops lights, and it may not have been as easy as pie, but it was a lot of fun. I learned a ton and it is all together. It feels really solid. So I can't wait to take it out on the road and the trail and take it out at night. And in the next video, we'll take you with us as we try that out. I just wanna say a big thank you to Cyclops ADV for believing in what we're doing here on our channel. If you wanna see what other products they have, make sure you check out their website, cyclopsadventuresports.com. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and tell us below what's your favorite Farkle on your motorcycle. We'll see you on the next ride.